We're going to start a series here on words of knowledge. You're having coffee with Conrad. Conrad Rocks! Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone to another edition of Coffee with Conrad. I'm going to be kicking off a series on the words of knowledge, which I believe falls under the prophetic umbrella. It's talked about in 1 Corinthians. Um, We're going to be talking about words of knowledge as opposed to discernment of spirits and words of wisdom, because this is closer to the biblical reservation where we stay with the Word of God. You'll you'll see that this will be revealed as we go throughout this, this teaching. Um... For those of you that don't know me, I'm Conrad from ConradRocks.net. I have a passion for the lukewarm to get back on fire for Jesus. We like to light and stoke the fires of revival. Um, Also, I very much so wish that you have a spiritual relationship with the biblical Jesus. I often refer to scriptures like Mark seven twenty one twenty three, where there's Christians doing Christian things. They think they are, right? They call Jesus Lord with their lips. But in verse 23, he says, Depart from me, I never knew you, you that work iniquity. So a lot of us can think we're on the right path, like the apostle Saul. Remember him in Acts chapter 9? He had the Torah memorized practically, and he was the Pharisee of Pharisee. But he was using the Bible to hurt Christians, Remember? Then he meets Jesus in Acts chapter 9 and talks a lot about walking after the Spirit after that. So that's my passion for us to have a a spiritual relationship with the biblical Jesus. Now as we talk about words of knowledge, the first thing that I, I must emphasize, and I'll probably emphasize it several times throughout this teaching, is that we cannot bypass a relationship with God. We cannot bypass that. We need to know why we're interested in this gift. Yeah, Paul says earnest, you know, earnestly covet to prophesy, but why? What's our motivation? You know, God tries the reins of the hearts. So we need to ask why why are we doing this? I got excited. I was just seeking God and I kind of accidentally stumbled across this. That's how I got it. And um, it's exciting. I just used to do the happy dance whenever the Spirit of Truth would reveal something to me in the Scriptures. And then I found out that it carries on in your daily life, too. So, as I'm emphasizing that we cannot bypass seeking a spiritual relationship with the biblical God, I want you to understand that a lot of people look suspiciously at this gift because it looks like something that Satan has mimicked in the world. It looks like witchcraft. It looks like something that the psychics do. And they do have a a counterfeit that looks very compelling. Um, The psychics and the people in witchcraft and so forth, they're basically talking to demons. And I've talked about this several times in in generational curses and so forth. Um, it, it, It looks like you're getting a word from God, but you're basically getting a word from demons. That's what the psychics are doing. And the way this works, just to quickly run over it, there's curses uh, that's passed down from the fathers to the third and fourth generation of those that hate, hate the Lord. Demons are assigned to carry out those curses, and they're called familiar spirits. These are demons that are assigned to your family, right? Familiar spirits. I've talked about it several times on this podcast. And when the psychics are accessing the supernatural realm and not the kingdom of heaven, not the domain of our king, Lord of Lords, uh, Jesus Christ, they're accessing the demonic realm, which people without a, a spiritual gift of discernment don't know the difference. So they go, well, it's all demonic. <laughs> That's kind of what they're doing. So the psychic will be talking to the familiar spirits. The familiar spirits will be mimicking the dead relative, and the person will say, only my dead grandfather knew that information. Well, no, the demons know it too. So This is why a lot of denominations, a lot of people just shy away from this altogether. 
This is why it's very important that you have personal discipleship in the vein of your call. You do not stray from Scripture. Uh, the Spirit and the Word agree. The Spirit and the Word agree. I cannot emphasize that enough. Uh, normally I do some teachings like this on uh, the Inner Circle podcasts because, you know, this is just, it's it's deep, you know, and it's, I don't, you can get, it can easily get misconstrued, and people can seek this gift with the wrong motivation. Now, if that, let, let's kind of stop that there. I want to, I want to give you something from James 1, 5. Um, in James, this is a post-cross scripture. It's uh, the brother of Jesus, right? If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. To giveth all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. This is James one five. Now, this is a spiritual component. We're supposed to ask God. This is a spiritual thing. When we pray, God answers if we have a relationship with him. Amen. Then he says in verse six, but let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and toss. For let not that man think he shall receive anything from the Lord. So if we're not Drawing near to God, draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Amen. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, right? That type of thing. Um, And I'm going to jump down to verse 17 as well. Every good gift, and this is a gift that we're talking about, is from above. In verse 17, it says, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. So if we're wanting this gift, we need to pursue a relationship with the giver of that gift, right? And he said earlier, let not that man think he shall receive anything of the Lord if you're not sincerely seeking a relationship with God. So I I just need to way emphasize that. This is a gift that... um, even prophetic people, this is this is something that I see quite a bit too. A lot of prophetic people can start out well grounded in Scripture, and then they start going, "Wow, look at this gift!" <laughs> they look at the shininess, the the obviously it's fun. They look at all that, and then they get consumed with the gift itself, and they do what I call leaving the biblical reservation. In other words, they just leave. Woo! They just leave the building as far as Scripture is concerned, and they leave their biblical grounding. And then I believe that that opens up the enemy for them to be a target. So we need to all, the Spirit and the Word agree. Also, the Spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus Christ. That's a Scripture in Revelation 19.10. As John is falling to the feet of the angel, you'll see that he says, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So every time there's a prophetic word, word of knowledge, there's something that's going to happen to edify Jesus. It's going to it's going to bring out a testifying of Jesus. So we need to keep this in mind. This is a gift where you must have mentors. Paul talks about this in 1 Corinthians yeah, around 14:28. If there be no interpreter, let him keep silent in the church. Let him speak to himself and to God. You know, these are relationships. I just want you guys to know we're supposed to have a spiritual relationship with the biblical God, okay? Then he says, let the prophet speak two or three and let the other judge. Uh, If anything be revealed to another, this is like a word of knowledge. (laughs) If anything be revealed to another that sitteth by, let the first hold his peace. For you may all prophesy one by one, that all may learn and may be comforted. So here we have prophets speaking two or three. Now, under the, and word of knowledge is under the umbrella of the prophetic gifting. Okay, we're going to talk a little bit about that. Um, a lot of people think, well, prophets only foretell future events. Well, no, prophets, if, if you look, there's many biblical examples of them having words of knowledge. So here it says... Let the other judge, and then it says, let them, that they may learn. So we can see clearly that there needs to be mentoring and discipleship. Jesus said to make disciples. And if you're, if you're having the bent or you feel a prophetic call on your life, you know, I'm going to pray that God sends you divine appointments. These people show up. If you have a prophetic gift, God has a way of putting people, like if you're an Elisha, he has a way of putting an Elijah 
in your life. You just need to pray for him and seek God diligently, and this will happen. You know, you don't just sit on the couch. You need to earnestly pursue God, right? And then that will happen. Paul, for instance, he begat Timothy and Onesimus, remember? And then Paul, uh, after Paul discipled Timothy, he sent Timothy to the Corinthians. You know, he discipled Timothy in the things that he learned. Jesus said, make disciples. So if you have this prophetic bent, if this is a calling that you feel on your life, that you sense in the Spirit, um, pray for God to send people. Seek out people in your church, too. Seek out people on the Internet. Um, but one of the dangers is without a personal relationship, when I, when I say seek out people on the Internet, um, if you don't have the this, this spiritual gift of discernment and you don't have a very good biblical foundation, you might be seeking the wrong people on the Internet. So so the Spirit and the Word agree. And I believe, you know, if you're pursuing the things of God, then you're going to know what He said, you know. You need to know what Jesus said. What does the Bible say? What does God's Word say about these gifts? You need to crack open the Bible and read it with the Spirit of Truth. So next here, I'm going to talk about where this is found in Scripture um, and kind of define what a word of knowledge is. In 1 Corinthians 12 is where we find the mention of this, this gift, starting with verse 7 in chapter 12. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit withal. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, and to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, and to others another diverse kinds of tongues, and to another the interpretation of the tongues. But all these worketh that one in the self same spirit divideth to every man several as he will. For as the body is one and hath many members, and all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. Now I the, the in the word spirit in this chapter, the S is capitalized by the King James, and that's the spirit pneuma. You know, pneuma is where we get the root pneumatic tool you know it's an air powered tool I'm always talking about how God breathed in Adam he animated the dead clay to move uh, we know that by this spirit God moved through holy men of God to write the word of God the word word is logos and you may find this interesting um, the word logos is something said and a lot of people make a distinguish distinction between rhema and logos. But if we look at the Greek 3056 in the Strong's, it says something said, including the thought, by implication, a topic, subject or discourse, also reasoning the mental faculty or motive, by extension, a computation, specifically with the article in John, the divine expression, that is Christ. So that's the word word something said isn't that interesting then we move on to the word knowledge which is gnosis it means the act of knowing something now i want to make a distinction between the word of knowledge and the discerning of spirits and the word of wisdom the word of knowledge is knowing some information it is being conveyed information like the lady with the dead boy as she was approaching Elisha. He said, the Lord had hid this from me. He didn't tell me. He didn't reveal it to me. The lady had some information that her child was dead. Elisha did not have that information, right? So this is simply information. Word of wisdom would be information that solves a problem that you can use, that can advance the kingdom in some way. The discerning of spirits, and this is probably why a lot of people shy away from the prophetic when they're first into, you know, it looks scary, right? If they don't have discernment of spirits yet, and they don't know whether this is demonic or of the Spirit of God. And 
you know, I, it, it's kind of scary to even talk about that because some of the Pharisees, they didn't have that discernment when Jesus was doing things. And they went so far as to say that Jesus' gifts were demonically inspired, remember? So we need to be careful. Even people in leadership, do not. some of them do not have this gift, and it's it can look scary. So I want to caution you um, to not just run off like a Christian cowboy and pursue this gift without a well-grounded relationship in the Word of God and a relationship with the biblical Jesus. And it's kind of funny because uh, when some people start getting these words of knowledge, one of the things that they, uh, a common mistake is they don't realize that they're a postman just delivering a message, and they try to interpret whatever they're getting and change it a little bit, and then they'll even say, thus saith the Lord. So we need to know, we need to be intimately familiar with with what this word of knowledge is. Uh, we need to seek discipleship. And notice that it, I kept emphasizing the word the same spirit. This is all given by the same Spirit of God. The Father of lights is mentioned in James 1.17. This is why we all prophesy in part. You'll notice that he says, for one's given a spirit of wisdom, another word of knowledge, the same spirit to another faith. But it's all the same Spirit. And then Paul says we all prophesy in part. This is why we can see in our daily lives that churches will all be talking about the Spirit-led churches, will all be talking about the same thing from a different aspect. It's like when God releases revelation into this realm, into, into you know, surely he does nothing without informing his servants, the prophets, as we can see in, in the book of Amos. He releases information. This information goes, and the people that are plugged into that information, that have relationship with God, that are listening to God, will catch an aspect of, of that information, and all of a sudden people will be posting things like uh, very similar on Facebook, on Twitter, social media, and churches will be preaching about the same thing. See it happen all the time. Now, I'm going to talk, I'm going to venture out a little bit here um, on the sources of this information. What are the sources of this information, and how does it get to the person with the gift. Now, one thing is this is not reasoning or perceiving through body language. And this is why I say it's simplest to to do this with strangers, with people that you don't know if you're learning because you don't have any preconceived ideas, you don't have any familiarity with them, right? Um so this information is from a spiritual aspect. It's not from reasoning or deducing, you know, like looking at tattoos or the way they're dressed or something like that. It's a spiritual revelation. Now, God, this this is something interesting here. I want to read 2 Kings 4, uh, 27. In 2 Kings 4, we'll see that Elisha prophesies uh, uh, that a lady will have a baby and the kid dies later. And she runs up to Elisha. And when she came to the man of God to the hill, she caught him by the feet. But Gehazi came near to thrust her away. And the man of God said, Let her alone, for her soul is vexed within her. And the Lord had hid it from me and hath not told me. So some people, some people say... The Lord, since he's the father of lights and he gives the gift, he relays the information and funnels that information to the prophet. Okay? The Lord hid it. In other words, and and so if the Lord hid it, that means the information is available somewhere, but it's like it's blocked. Right? So the Lord hid that information. The source came from the lady. Okay? Or um, most people, it's kind of like body odor. You know, you're in the room, you're sitting next to somebody, they have body odor, you're picking it up, right? Or there's a block. Someone used deodorant, and it blocks that from getting to you. So it's a, it's the same type situation. God hid that information from Elisha. Now, Jesus with a woman at the well. 
let's take a look at that. I mean, there's there's many, many, many biblical examples, and I'll run through quite a bit during this series. Um, Jesus with the woman at the well. Did God open that up? He was fully God and fully man. Okay, we have to work on that premise. But did God reveal that information to Jesus, the Father? Did he do that? Or did it simply? Did he simply perceive it directly? Um, there's revelation like John the Revelator. He was receiving dr- information directly from the Lord. That's revelation. The subtitle of my blog is Rocks of Revelation Being Poured Out. Paul talks in Galatians how he conferred not with flesh and blood, but he was taught by the Lord directly. He went up by revelation. Um, now, this is another reason that it looks demonic because the psychics do the same thing. I want to reiterate that the psychics, um, they don't do the same thing exactly. They're getting in their information from a counterfeit. Um, as we talked earlier, there are generational curses, and demons carry out these curses through familiar spirits, family, right? And the psychic will be talking to a, a demon that mimics a dead family member. So this information does come from a supernatural realm, but that one is not from God. And that's why a lot of people say, you know what, we're just going to block the whole thing here. And I, I can see that. Now, in the next series, I'm going to be giving some more scriptural examples. going to be talking about how it works, um, preparing ourselves for this gift, you know, what can we do to prepare ourselves? Taking responsible, taking responsibility for this gift. And also, I'm going to reveal some of my own personal examples that I've had so you can learn from that. All right, so stay tuned for the next part of the series on the words of knowledge. God bless you. Till we meet again, dig deeper and go higher. Dig deeper. Dig deeper. Go higher at comradrocks.net.